typically would be the things where you're doing smart photo fix or you're doing Gaussian blurs or you're doing some other sorts of work. Um, uh, those will be encapsulated in the history of the file and you'll see a little yellow pencil show up for JPEGs and any of the other editable formats. Once again, you can go in and capture that editing and go on to another JPEG and apply the editing and it will um, it'll, it'll take all of the relevant steps that you've made in the history of editing your that other photo and apply it to another one. So it's batch processing made very, very easy, very, very powerful because it's so simple to use, so easy to, uh, to get into. All right, so looking at the time, we're doing fine. Let's look at a couple of of other tools that we would, can use here. Uh, I'm going to click on a couple of photos and go into the full editor. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've seen the, uh, the organizer, we've seen Express Lab, we've seen uh, the full editor uh, and how each of them have a similar set of tools. The full editor is always going to have the biggest set of tools available to you. And um, in the full editor, uh, there's there's a, a, a lot you can do with multi photos multiple photos at the same time again using layers and so on I'm going to show a little bit of that but also in this particular discussion let's talk about uh, the ability to do some things like background removal and uh, some other layering effects that come out of that so we um, have here um, a, a photo of a temple and we have a photo of some sky and uh, I like the sky shot that we have here we can kind of ignore the fact that there's a, a model airplane in it right now but I would love to have that sky behind my temple so let's take a look at um, first of all some simple things you can do let's take this image and rotate it left I'll move it out of the way I actually probably don't need her at this point back here I'll move that out of the way all right, um, so I've got my sky and I've got my temple. Now, the first thing I might want to do with that temple is to remove the not-so-great sky. So let's use a tool, and this tool is available to, uh, I believe, X1 users, X2 users, uh, X2 Ultimate users, as well as um, in our X3 program. Uh, and let's just go ahead and convert the, the program um, to a full promote this to a full layer and go ahead and make our edits to it. The way I'm using this tool is very simply clicking on the spot that I want to have removed and you can see that it basically will follow uh, the edge of whatever it is that's around it. I don't really want to touch whatever it is that's around it because I don't want it to remove that as well, but whatever I'm touching it will find the edge and remove up to it. So this is a pretty useful, pretty powerful little way of, oops, cleaning up an area. Undo is great for that. If I just go ahead and undo, you'll see that I bring it back. This is why I usually will, will click. I'll get an area the way I want it. I'll then uh, unclick and then uh, uh, go on from there, basically uh, keeping areas keeping uh, you know the undo rework uh, as to as, as small of an area as possible. Again, just quickly trying to, to do a little background removal here. In areas that are enclosed, you're going to go ahead and click on the inside of those and you can always zoom in to get a little closer to the detail uh, so that you can uh, so you can clean them up as much as possible. There we are. We could probably remove that light, but for the purpose of this demo, we won't bother with that one. Um, I'm going to follow down the edge here. I will go ahead and remove this light because that's not interesting to me. And I got a little more touch up to do in this area. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I've outlined the, the temple at this point. Let me touch that up over there. I'm going to switch over to my eraser. I'm actually up the hardness on this dramatically so that I can actually just use it to fully, full-on erase whatever I, I don't want in this Im image. You can also do this with selection and hitting the delete key. There's always a lot of ways of doing uh, specific types of edits like this. Um, I 
probably want to remove this as well. Shoot, I could just use a bigger brush. Get a little bit more out of there, a little quicker. Get rid of that bird in the sky at the same time. And let's knock this stuff out down here. A little smaller brush. Again, I, the main thing I want you to think about here is just play, go in, enjoy, get, get an idea of something like this and say, huh. Oh, I can do that. Let's go figure that out. So a lot of things I can do now with this uh, this image. Uh, for for me, it's a little bit uh, under uh, saturated. It's uh, it's something that I would like to see a little a uh, little more colorful. Let's do that with this. Let's uh, up the shadows a little bit. Get a little more pop out of this thing. Uh, pick up the highlights just a little bit more. Um, yeah. So you 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 see again a little bit more vibrancy to the image just by making a few very simple changes. Again, we could go further. Uh, in, uh, in X3, by the way, we have a new tool under Hue and Saturation called Vibrancy. Uh, this will uh, dramatically increase the color saturation uh, in a fairly even way in the photo. So it, uh, it's a rather slow tool. It's uh, got a very complex algorithm but I'm going to go ahead and use that on this one. So of, of everything I've done in the last couple of minutes here, vibrancy is the only thing that you have to have X3 to, to do. So anyway, I've picked this up a little bit. I've lightened it up a little bit. Now what's the deal with the sky that's over here? Let's just click on this photo. I'm going to click on the background. I am going to click, hold, drag, and I'm going to bring it over to this other photo. And once I see the little plus sign, I'm just going to drop it. Now when I click on this photo, you'll see that I have the sky above the temple, which means that the sky has greater priority. We're going to see the sky. Well, I just drop, I'm just going to take it, grab it, drop it here, and it's going to switch the layers, and you can see the difference here. Now, you also see that I kind of messed up on my erasing a little bit, so let me go in and just touch up those little white spots that I've missed. And there you go. But anyway, very dramatic look to this, this image all of a sudden. Uh, a pretty good clean cut around the edges. You can see a little bit of white that I might have to go in and touch up on here. But basically you get a, uh, an interesting change. And this is one of those kind of bend, you know, photo bending sort of uh, uh, things that you can do. Fairly interesting uh, changes. Uh, very powerful in this regard. So quickly let me uh, hop over and show another uh, tool that we have and uh, for background removal. Now this is an X3 tool. It is brand new. It is called the Object Extractor. And uh, I'm going to go back over to the full editor with a couple of these photos. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll just put this guy out of the way and focus more on this guy right over here. Do just a quick crop just so you can see better what I'm doing. And a little bit more focused. I'm going to go to the um, image menu down to object extractor. All right. And the basic way that the object extractor works is this. I paint around whatever it is that I want to extract from its background. Um, you know, basically cover up any of the hairs that I would have or, or any of the things around the edge that are, are, are necessary. And I'm going to go ahead and just outline that completely. If I have any areas where I've kind of, kind of gone over the line or drawn outside the lines, I'm just going to go back and touch those up a little bit just so it's encasing the whatever it is. Now, I have this fill tool. And this red fill tool, if I fill the background, it'll basically knock out his head. In this case, I don't really want that. I want his head. So I'm going to fill his head. Um, that tells the tool what to, what to actually process. And there we are. So it's a little sloppy because I did a quick brush on it. Uh, this tool doesn't work. 100% uh, of the time, based on your photo, you need to be a little bit careful with making sure that you have uh, actual uh, contrast between the, the object and its background, but it does a pretty good job on hair, trees, leaves, wispy stuff, uh, which is a lot harder to do in the other tools. So I'll just take this very quickly just to show what it looks like, even though it's not perfect.